Hi guys, I'm Paul McCorder and welcome to our second lesson on integrating the Arduino microcontroller with the Python programming language. Uh, in the first uh, lesson we just basically gave you a little overview of what we were going to try to do and showed you that by doing this it's really simple and you can do some cool projects like creating a virtual world like I've done here. Here's the virtual world, here's the real world, I have a card I have a card in the real world. I put it down here. It shows up in the virtual world and I can control the distance. And as I move things in the real world, things happen in the virtual world. Orange card goes into the virtual world as orange and moves with the real world. Green goes into the virtual, goes into the real world, pops into the virtual world. Pink. So you see it matches the color and the distance. I think this is just super cool, super cool. And what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how you can do this yourself. And I think what you're going to be surprised is it's going to be a lot easier than, than, than you think to do this. It's going to be a lot easier. And you can see that just a whole new world of possibilities is going to be opened up when you can take the data that's coming off of your Arduino and get it into the computer and start doing some really super, super cool things. So the first thing we're going to have to do is install the software. I'm going to take you through it step by step and then just follow along with me and then maybe at the end of the lesson we will do just a really quick example. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start downloading some software. And the good news is Python and the libraries are all free and they're very easy to install and I'll just take you through it here on the video step by step but it should be no problem at all. First thing we need to do is install the Python programming language language itself. Uh, Python, there's sort of two threads of Python. There's the 2.7 series which is the previous generation series and there's the new series of Python which is Python 3. Believe it or not we want to install the older one 2.7 7. and the reason for that is is there's so much legacy software out there so much legacy, so many legacy libraries. The thing is, is that if you go to three, you might need to do something, but the library might not be available in three. And so I think most people are still using 2.7. It's the one I really like, and I see no reason at this point to upgrade to three. So if you're going to be going through this uh, tutorial with me, it it is strongly recommended that you use version 2.7. So the easiest way to get there is just tap in something like download. Python 2.7 and I'm, I'm on Windows even though I don't like Microsoft Windows very much. So here it is Python release 2.7 Python org. We click on that. So where are we? We're at HTTPS www.python.org slash download slash releases. Now is we can come down and it says Python release 2.7. It says 2.7.7 is currently available. So let's go there. <coughs> Click on available. When we get to 2.7.7, it tells us that now there's a newer version, 2.7.8. <coughs> so this is the latest 2.7. So I'm going with the latest 2.7. Maybe when you install it, there'll be something later. But just stay in that 2.7 series. So so Python 2.7.8. <coughs> okay, so we're at www.python.org slash download slash releases slash 2.7.8. Now we got to decide which one to download. Okay, I have a Windows 64-bit machine, but even though I have a 64-bit machine, you really want to install that 32-bit software. And the reason for that is the same that we sort of did the 2.7 on the uh, on, on the Python version and that is is that you might get out there and there might be a library that's not available in 64-bit. If you go with 32-bit you'll be able to get all the libraries, all the legacy software. So we're going to go Windows times 86 MSI installer 2.7.8 and it starts downloading uh, right here. I have a very fast connection and so this seems to just be going really really fast. <coughs> Give it just a second to finish here. It is finished and then we will click on that. Hopefully you're using Google Chrome and uh, downloading something is as easy as what you're seeing here. Do you want to run this file? It's from Python 
Python Software Foundation, yes, we're going to run it. Okay, we'll install for all users. Now you do need to pay attention where this is going and it's putting it in the folder on your C drive Python 27. Yes, that's a good place to put it. So we'll say next. <coughs> it says, do we want to overwrite? Well, I had a previous installation, so yes. I'll step you through it and say overwrite and then we say next. Uh, customize, nope, we don't want to fool with it, so we just say next. And it's going to take a second or two to install. And while it's doing that, I'll talk to you just a little bit about Okay, let's see. Do you want to allow the following programs to install? Yes. Okay, yes, we want it to install. So you've learned the Arduino very, very strict. That Like if you're going to use a variable, you have to declare the variable. And then you have the curly brackets open, curly brackets closed for your clauses. Everything is very, very pristine. Python's a little more, eh, not quite so. You don't have to declare variables. You want to start using a variable in the middle of your program, you can start using it. A new variable in the milligram. Python doesn't get care. You don't have to declare your variables. Uh, so one of the things you got to get having to declare your variables, and so that's one of the distinguishing things about Python. Another one is is that you know in the Arduino you you signified your clauses by open curly close curly bracket. Well, Python doesn't have brackets. The way that you signify clauses is with indenting. So when you indent something, that is how you communicate the start or the end of a of, of a clause. And that is a it's kind of nice, but it's a little bit tricky. You know, you got you, you can trouble if you don't get your white uh, white spaces done. It looks like it's install said finish. So we now have Python installed. The next thing that we need to install is, and you know, we know how you're always turning your serial monitor and then you're printing stuff or sending stuff over that serial monitor, that serial port. Well, PySerial is a library that goes with Python that makes it very very easy for Python to listen and talk over that serial uh, port. And so since you're Already, the Arduino is already talking over the serial port. You just need a library so that, that Python can talk over that serial port. Then you've got Python and Arduino talking together just like it was one big happy program. So here what we want to do is we want to say PySerial. And since we have Python 2.7, we want to install PySerial 2.7 because we want the same version. Okay, and so it looks like here PySerial, uh, uh, PySerial 2.7 documentation. That like what we, yeah, that does look like what we want. So where are we? PySerial.sourceforge.net slash PySerial.html. And you can see how we got there. We just Google searched PySerial 2.7. When we did that, we got this alt first one, PySerial. PySerial 2.7 documentation. Now we want to go to the download page. Third link here, the download page. Click it. Okay. <coughs> now we got to decide which one to download. We're on Windows. And so again, we want PySerial 2.7 because we're on Python 2.7. And we want 2 bit because we install 32 bit version of Python. And you see, I don't even see if they have a 64 bit. So it might already be paying off that we did the, uh, that we did the, the uh, 32, -bit, uh, 32 bit installation. So this is an installer. The, the second one, I don't want to download the, the uh, source file. I just want an installer because I like to do the easy way. Okay, that was a quick download. Let's go ahead and click that. Okay, run. And already it pops up. Do we want to install it? Yes, next. Okay, <coughs> where do we install it? Well, remember we installed it. So we say next. And it says ready to install. And then we're going to say next. And it is installed. And then we say finish. And it is all done. So we have two of the programs done that we need. This is going lickety split. There is a library for Python that does magical and wonderful and spectacular things. And we will want to download that library. And it is called V, as in Victor, V Python. So download V Python. OK. Download Windows V Python. We'll click on that. <coughs> and it says vpython.org slash content slash download underscore windows dot html. That's where we ended up. All right. And let's look here. So what in the installation, it says first download and install 32-bit Python. We've done that okay. Then it says uh, 
Second, install bpython win 32.6.10. Okay, that looks pretty good. And again, we're not doing the 64-bit. We're doing the one that works for everything. We've already done the first step, and so we just want bpython dash windows dash 32 dash pi 2.7 dash 610 <coughs> and we come to the SourceForge page and don't do anything it's going to download sometimes it tries to tr trick you into downloading other software but you don't want to do that you already clicked on it you look down here in Google Chrome I really suggest you get Google Chrome with if you don't have it already. A lot of these downloads and installs go so much easier on Google Chrome. So you can see our vPython is uh, installing and that is a very good thing. And we'll just give it a second here. This is the last thing that we're going to have to do and so I think on this uh, uh, what we're going to have time to do today is we're going to have time to do a very quick simple little program to get Python and Arduino talking together just to show you how easy it is. So this is turning out to be a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. Okay, there it is. It is happy. We click on it. Do we want to run it? Yes, we want to run it. Yes. Okay, click on next. Yep, you want the default stuff. You kind of want all of that. Uh, ooh, this is, uh, this is pretty neat. You're getting NumPy which is one of the things, or NumPy or NumPy, that's one of the really cool libraries that, that we wanted anyway. I'm glad to see that that comes with it. And so create a desktop icon for Vidal, V-I-D-L-E. Well, this is the Python equivalent of your, your integrated development environment, your little palette that you use in, in Arduino to write your programs on. Well, this is is that same palette only for the uh, Python. So you had the one for Arduino to write your programs. Now you'll have a different one to write your programs in Python. And so yes, we want a desktop icon. And we're going to say yes. And we're going to say install. And we are off to the races. This shouldn't take but just a second. And we are just about done. Okay, finish. All right, I'm going to close this. Uh, I'm going to close this. And I need to find that little icon, which is going to be behind, uh, behind this. I will move it out here. And let's see if we can open up Python. Okay, so we're going to click on that. And yes, we have a Python window that we can write a program in. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. I can hardly stand it. I'm going to have to write a program. So let's say print hello world. Now you see this? You see what I mean about Python being a lot more casual about things? You don't have to have a lot of you know, parentheses or anything like that. You just sort of say print hello world, no trailing semicolon. And then if I say run, what it will do is it will run it. It will call up this window and it does what I said. It says print hello world. So you see, we've written our first little program in, uh, in uh, Python. One of the things I want to do is I want to come here and I want to pin this to my start menu because this is something that we use quite a bit. And so I don't want to lose it. So I'm I'm going to say uh, pin to start menu and that way I will always have it uh, when I need it right there and so that will be uh, something that makes my life a lot easier okay what we're going to do now is man we got this stuff installed pretty quick let's just try a real quick program where we get the Arduino to talk Talk to the Python and, and, and we're sending data from Arduino to Python because once you get your Arduino data into Python it's off to the races. It's unbelievable the stuff you can do. So let's try to do that real quickly. All right, all right, let's jump right in and let's write our first program. Okay, we want the Arduino down here talking to the Python and once we can get them talking together then we can start doing great things. So let's call up a little, uh, let's call up a little Arduino window here. I will open uh, one. Okay, this is going to be just a real, real simple little program that counts. And so we're going to need one variable. I'm going to call it int and it's going to be a count 
a counter. I'm just going to call it the variable count zero. All right, I'll start at zero. <clears throat> now we are going to be using our serial monitor because that's the whole point is to talk over the serial port. So I'm going to do a serial dot begin <clears throat> 9600 baud. You know all about that. And then we're going to come down in our void loop and we're just going to count. <clears throat> so I'm going to say serial dot print. And I'm, not, I'm going to put several things on one line, so I'm going to do a print and not a print line yet. And I'm going to say, I am counting to. Okay, I'm going to print that string. And I'm going to do a serial dot dot print. And then I'm going to put in my number count, C and T. <coughs> and then I'm going to do a seri serial dot print LN. I'm going to finish it up here. And I was taught to count in Mississippis. Uh, am I the only one that was taught that if anybody else was taught to count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, please let me know because I might be the only one on the face of the earth that was taught that. Okay, now we're looping and counting, so I want count to be equal to count plus one. <coughs> and now we're kind of counting at one second intervals. That's the purpose of the whole Mississippi business. So. We're going to delay 1,000 milliseconds. Let's see if I get lucky. Boom. Boom. It's going to work. Okay. I want to check the program uh, before I go over to Python. I just want to check and make sure that, that it's working. So let's look here. I'm counting to 0 Mississippi, 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi. All right. Yeah. So it's working. It's sending that over the serial port. One warning. You can't have more than one thing looking at the serial port, so I can't go over to Python and be listening to the serial port if I have the serial monitor on, so i got to kill that. <coughs> now, do you see what's happening here? The Arduino, the Arduino down here, this little board, this little chip, is counting, and it's sending that information over the serial port. Now, it's throwing that data, so now we got to come over here and catch it. Okay, we got to come over here and catch it. And we're going to catch that data using Python. Okay, so we're opening up our Python window, our Python integrated development environment. And this is going to be your first little Python program. I guess we did a Hello World one, so this will be your second uh, Python program. Well, we are talking over the serial port, right? <coughs> Remember how we downloaded PySerial? We've got to import. And we, we got to import the library. We just type in import, turns orange, good, sees it. And it's just called serial. And so that pi serial library is called serial. So we're going to import serial library. Okay. Now, we got to we got to create an object. And that object is something that we're going to interact with to get our data off the serial port. And so this object is going to be an object that is tied to that serial port. So I'm going to call it, since I'm talking to Arduino, I'm going to call it Arduino Serial Data. Okay, that's the object that I'm creating. And I create it with serial, with a little s, dot serial with a big s. <clears throat> Don't ask me why. That's the way you do it. This comes from this library. Okay. And then what I'm doing here is I can name this anything I want. This is the object that I'm creating. I'm calling it my Arduino serial data. data. I could have called it, you know, my Mississippi counting. Okay. I could have called it whatever. But I call it Arduino serial data. And that's equal to an object that is created with serial.serial. .serial. Now we got to tell it. We got to tell it what COM port we're on. And you put that in single quotes. Well, which COM port are we on? We had better go check that. So we come under tools here in Arduino and we look at port and you see that the serial port is port 11. And we talked about that a long time ago, but you've got to make sure. And you know, when I come in and run this program later, it might not be on the same port. So if you have a problem, you always got to make sure that you're setting that, that your Arduino is talking to the same port that your that your uh, 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 Python is listening to, or Python is listening for the port that Arduino is talking on. Which port is Arduino talking on? He is talking on COM11. All right. So look at that. 
COM lowercase 11. Why is it COM 11? Because we just verified that this Arduino is talking over COM 11. And we've got to tell it the baud rate. Well, what baud rate were we using on our Arduino program? <coughs> For why that no work? Ah, here it is. Okay. We set the serial port in Arduino to 9600. That has to match. It doesn't have to be 9600. 600, it's just got to match what you did before. Look at this. Also notice, look at this. We don't have to put all those silly semicolons. You know, Python, nah, you don't need it. All right. <clears throat> now, the other thing to notice is, is that when we are doing something in Arduino, we always have this void setup and this void loop, and so you automatically loop in Arduino because of this void loop. Well, Python doesn't have that loop built in, so we're going to have to make a loop because we want to continuously be listening from, reading from the serial port, reading from the serial port, reading from the serial port. So we need a loop. And so I'm just going to create kind of a silly one. I'm going to call it while 1 is equal to 1. Okay. Now, when is 1 equal 1? 1 is always going to equal 1, so I'm creating an infinite loop that this will always be looping into. It's just going to loop, 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 because 1 is equal to always equal to 1. And just like Arduino, you put the double uh, equals if you're asking it. Does 1 equal 1? Okay. Since you're asking it, it's the double. It's a conditional. <coughs> this is how you do a while loop. Also, look that we don't put a curly bracket. We just put a colon, and that's telling it, here is my... Uh, clause. Here is my while loop. And then the way it does the while loop is with indenting. And everything that is indented will be part of while loop. When you want, like if I'll just put A, B, C, D. When you want to end the while loop, you put E. And so this would be the looping, and then this is where it ended. Of course, this isn't real stuff. This is just showing you that the loop is defined through uh, indention. And so you've got to keep track of your white spaces in uh, uh, in Python. Okay, so now in this while loop, what do we want to do? We want to go out and read the data off the serial port. The thing is, though, you got to be careful because you don't want to do a read if there's no data there. So you've got to wait until there's data because you don't know what's going on with the Arduino. He might be doing who knows what. He might be out doing some very important calculations and he hasn't sent anything yet. So the first thing you do before you read is you wait until there's data on the serial port. And you do that with an if statement. You say if, <coughs> okay, what is the what is the object that we're talking to? Our Arduino serial data. Okay, that's that object that we created. Dot in waiting. Open close is greater than zero. <coughs> Let's break this down. What this is saying is you're only going to do the commands underneath this if statement if there is data waiting at our serial port object, Arduino serial data. So if we come here and there's no data, it won't do the if statement. It'll just loop again. Is there data? No. It'll just loop. Is there data? No. It'll just loop. Is there data? Ah, yes, there's data. Then it will come in and do this. <coughs> so you only get inside of this if statement if there's data waiting on the serial port. Okay, same thing here, not a curly bracket like you would think in uh, in Arduino, but it's a colon. And you got to indent again these indents nest. And so where does the if statement start? It's going to do everything that's indented. Okay, so now if we get to this point, that means that in waiting was greater than zero. That means there was data waiting. There was Arduino serial data waiting, and because it's waiting, we're going to read it. And this is how we got to do it. We read it into a variable. My data. <coughs> Wait a minute. We haven't declared my data. We don't have to. This is Python. You just go with it, right? You don't have to declare your variables. You just make them up as you go along. And we just made that up. My data is equal to... <coughs> we want to read off of this object. We want to read off of this serial port object that we called our... We know serial data. Okay. And what do we want to do? A dot read line. You'll sign a lot of the commands in <coughs> Python sort of are just these kind of void open uh, in with void open close parentheses like that. You'll, you'll get used to this, so don't panic. Okay. So what is this saying? We're going to import the serial library. 
then we're going to create this serial object. We're going to create this object that is sort of our name for this serial port. And we created it by calling it Arduino Serial Data. We did it with a serial.serial .serial command. We told it that we want to be working on a COM11, because that's where we know the Python is talking, and a baud rate of 9600. Now we create this while loop that's going to just loop forever, because one's always one. Then we create, create an if statement. We're only going to read this data if there's data there, because you don't want to try to read an, imp an empty uh, 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 serial port. That's bad form. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to say my data is equal to Arduino serial data dot read line. That goes out to that serial port and it pulls in what's ever there and it puts it in the variable my data. <coughs> so now what do we want to do? And this is just this is just because it's a read line, it's just bringing in a string. So you've got to understand, even if you put a number there, it's bringing it in as a string. You'll, string. You'll have to deal with that later, and it's easy to deal with. But just understand, even if it's the number 7, when you read it, you're not reading the number 7. You're reading the string of one character, the character 7, which is different than the number 7, even though they look the same. You've got to remember that it's read line commands you're reading a string. And this is the way I like to do it. And everything, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to print out a string and then I'm just going to read it as a string and then I'll deal with it and convert it to a float or an int or whatever. But I'm just always going to read it as a string because that just seems to work. So now I've got my data is equal to Arduino serial, da uh, uh, serial data dot read line. So I've read it into here. <coughs> and now <coughs> what do I want to do? I'm just going to print my data. Okay, so I'm going to wait for it. When it's there, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to print it. Then I come back and I wait for the next one, and then I'm going to print it. You know, this thing might go through this loop thousands of times until it gets to the point that the data is there, because this runs real, real, real fast. And so you might go through here a thousand times where there's no data, even though it's coming once a second. And then when there's data, then it'll read it, and it'll print it. <coughs> okay, so remember, we had the Arduino running this little program it's already running okay it's already running and so now we're going to run our python program come up python run module and look at this it opens up a new window i am counting to one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi this is getting that from the arduino the arduino is sitting there and it's throwing it data and the python is over here catching it and printing it out i can't tell you how huge this is because once we got this arduino data into python the world is our oyster i mean we can do anything all of these bazillion libraries that python has and all these graphic programs and all these things are now at our fingertips because our little Arduino data is now in the big bad world of Python. And that's what this series of lessons is going to be about. This data that we're getting in from the Arduino, now we can do just really, really big and impressive things with. And so that's what we're going to be getting into. I'm Paul McWhorter. This has been lesson number two on Python with Arduino, and hope you will tune in very shortly for lesson number three. Take it easy, guys.